Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Dr. Clarence Perkins, Associate Head of School and Upper School Director at Westmark School. Clarence has an extensive background as a teacher and schools administrator, most recently as Assistant Head of School at the Redwood Day School, and as High School Division Director at the Trevor Day School in New York. Clarence has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Clarence, for joining us today. My pleasure. So you've had quite a trajectory in your career, and you've worked in a number of different schools' environments, and most recently in a number of very uh, prominent schools throughout the country. Talk about the difference for a school like Westmark that is working with children with language-based learning differences and other schools that are also providing individualized education, but educating students who are not living with those differences. Sure. In my experience, each independent school where I've worked has had a mixed population. Many students with language-based learning differences and students without or may have other learning differences. And in each context, uh, school administrators, teachers, myself, we work to um, ensure that students are accommodated where their psychoeducation evaluation specifies that. Um, the difference at Westmark is the entire school environment is geared to support students with particularly language-based learning differences. And because of that, in our professional development, in the work we do as administrators, as teachers, as staff, and how we bring families into the school environment, uh, we can focus on providing accommodations and supports for that population. So it's, it's very interesting to me, each of us learns in a particular way, and many of us learn in the same way. So our schools have been designed around that sort of mass group of people who learn in ways that are very similar. And then you have students who learn in different ways, and there needs to be an accommodation. You basically take this sort of normative way of learning, and you accommodate that. And, and you, you create these distinctions to try and deal with that gap. At Westmark, though, the normative is actually built around these learning differences. Absolutely. And I think it's important to note that specifically around language-based learning differences. Um, I, I think human diversity in learning is so broad, I don't think one school environment can capture and successfully educate every way in which a human being learns. So our mission is designed and we, we lay out language-based learning differences so that we can maximize um, supporting students in helping them be more efficient and effective readers in particular. Uh, a lot of our program um, emphasizes uh, visual learning. We use graphic organizers. Um, so th we have an array of programs and teaching techniques specifically designed for students with that learning difference. Though we acknowledge there are other learning differences out there, uh, we, we, we are designed to support that one. And I think that makes for the power of the program and for the success. Uh, let's talk about the story of the teacher. Teachers get into this, uh, this field because they are passionate about being educators. They're passionate about a child's journey. Um, and now you have children who have not been able to undertake the journey that they would wish to undertake at, at other schools. They come into Westmark. How does that process, that, that idea of providing that education inform how you select teachers and how you recruit them? And then how you bring them into uh, Westmark? What do they have to learn when they come into Westmark? Teachers come into education with various commitments. Mm -hmm. They have often, especially in the upper grades, a commitment to a subject area and they're interested in sharing their passion for that subject area with their students and they want to see their students succeed within that area. Um, we also have teachers who are very interested in how students learn the subject area and those might differ from teachers who are interested in maximizing students learning in that subject area. So when we interview, when we talk with teachers, um, we like teachers who are equally interested in how students are learning that subject area because that means that they are more attuned to not just the subject area but the methodologies. And that's so interesting. Uh, you, you break down the motivations, the intrinsic motivations of a teacher and how they will approach their, their subject and what you're saying is that the motivation itself and then the approach that the teacher wishes to take, that itself 
is part of your selection process uh, for teachers. Yes, and in my experience, that's often a part of how teachers present themselves in their resumes. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, um, this year, as we were looking for a particular subject that teach a, a subject matter, um, I, I, we selected and moved forward with a teacher who had a background in Linda Mood Bell teaching methodologies. And that is directly connected to supporting students with learning differences, language-based learning differences. Um, obviously they were very qualified candidates who hadn't in their background said, hey, I want to learn about that methodology to support students for whom learning Spanish in a traditional manner is more difficult. So that's just an example of as we interview uh, and we talk about their work with students, how they have um, uh, worked with students with accommodations, uh, the manner in which they've approached, uh, how they have helped families, administrators understand a student's learning profile, just a sort of attunement, that they are attuned to students who often find school difficult and that they want to spend as much time helping them uh, just making school comfortable as well as excelling in their subject area. In terms of your interview technique when you're talking to a teacher, do you guide them through these uh, series of questions or do you just ask open-ended questions and see how they would just naturally respond? Yes, I, I like to um, ask teachers to reflect on an experience. So I might say, so give me an example of bring to mind one of your more difficult students to teach in the traditional classroom. So you identified them um, and then how did you work with them? How did you make the classroom environment work for them? Or, and where did you find success? Where did you seek resources? Where did you find success? And teachers, as they tell their story, you get a pretty good sense of how they approach students in the classroom and how they would work with students at Westmark. We're looking for teachers who have a disposition. They're attracted. They want to reach out and help students in this fashion. And, and some have specific training in the area. Others just have a passion and want to learn and grow more. So we're willing to work with a range of teachers, uh, those who are best fit to serve our population. And then once a teacher comes in, do you just throw them into the classroom and say, go ahead, do your thing? Or do you provide uh, more of a context and, a, and guidance to newer teachers um, as, they, as they become acclimated to the, uh, to the Westmark uh, teaching environment? Right. Um, Every school has a different culture, uh, a different expectation on how teachers approach students, as well as different teaching methodologies. So we have a set of methodologies that we want teachers to be familiar with. Sometimes they come to Westmark with them. If not, we set up a plan for mentoring or professional development to get them up to speed in that methodology quickly. But we're always trying to come back to that idea of finding the student's strength and how will the strength enable a student to overcome the deficit. So it's a strength-based methodology, and what's very interesting in, the, in that approach is that while each strength might be unique, or each collection of strengths might be unique, it's actually a repeatable process. You end up with a completely tailored uh, approach, but significantly a repeatable and tailored uh, approach that you can apply from student to student. Absolutely, and I, I'll give you an example. Um, something that we are working on with the academic counselors in the upper school. Mm -hmm. So obviously there are times when a, when a student is hitting their breakdown point and they're not able to get the homework in or they're a distraction in class or they're not able to do something. So we will call teachers together um, and we will literally lay out in our action plan what is, are, the, are the students' strengths. We will look at accommodations and then we'll, we will review the breakdown points. And then we will intentionally look for how we can address each breakdown point with a strength. And then we invite the family and the student in and we share with the family what we are going to do as a school, reminding the student and the family, your, your child has strengths. Right. That's the good news in our meeting. And we are going to work with your student, including their voice and the family's voice, in using that strength to help the student um, overcome the breakdown point. Now the strength then also gets mapped to the, to, to the approach. So the approach might be an approach that is um, really about process, or it might be an approach that is, a, that, that is assisted by uh, some sort of assistive technology, yes. uh, or it might be uh, some sort of a, a repetitious technique that, that, that occurs. 
Um, so you're, you're basically creating a series of responses that are based on what the child can do as opposed to what the child cannot do. Yes. That's an empowering act. Yeah. Empowers the parents, empowers the students, empowers the teachers. Absolutely. And we are a small school, and our commitment is to knowing each student individually. And I'll give you an example of something that happened earlier in this year. We had a student uh, for whom um, maintaining focus in the classroom was really difficult. Uh, the student also very competitive. Mm -hmm. And always, you know, you could tell that they wanted to be on top. So what we did was we um, talked with the student about what are the concerns your teachers have. And I met with the student in my office. Well, teachers want to make sure that I get my books out without repeatedly asking me to get my books out. Um, I turn to my friends and I make jokes. Teachers are asking me not to do that. Um, so I said, well, well, let's put a little chart together. And then, you know, this is not punitive, it's not disciplinary. And your teacher doesn't have to see it. Students don't have to see it. But just put a check down every time a teacher asks you, take out your book. And the issues went away because that deficit fed into the student's sense of, you know, I want to be a good student, right. that, almost that sense of competition. Right. And the student started to recognize his behavior and he, he made adjustments rather quickly because at the end of the period he wanted to say, I did not have to have a teacher repeatedly ask me to take out my pencil. I did not have a teacher to ask me repeatedly, you know, don't distract my neighbor. And that's working with the student, and the student is very proud of, of himself, and it's something that works, but that's knowing the student as an individual. His strength is actually he wants to be a very good and strong student. That was a window into how he could improve his behavior, and it worked. And is there a difference in the, in the interaction among the students um, in, in, in this environment where everybody is dealing with some type of uh, language-based issue as opposed to a situation where that student might feel um, uh, on the margins uh, of what other students are, are, are able to do. Yes, absolutely. So if you think of the experience of the school mm -hmm. and a student for whom school is difficult, so they are usually going to receive, let's say, have more negative interactions with teachers and administrators. So they might be sent out of the office if they are distracting to their neighbors right. because they're not able to focus. Uh, they will receive a lot of red ink on their papers if they're not effective writers. Um, the, the, you know, so they're not necessarily going to feel as though they are thriving. And teachers are set on, you know, here's a standard that you have to meet. I'll do everything I can for you, but, you know, I need you to meet it like other students meet the standard. And so we talk intentionally about not replicating some of those experiences. So the student who has a really difficult time getting their homework in, we try not to have an experience of, okay, everyone, take out your homework, hold it up so I can see who did the homework and who didn't do it. Because this student is struggling with that, so we'll have a more discreet way of, of, of just processing homework. Um, as I mentioned with you, a student who um, has a hard time uh, staying focused in class. Uh, my conversation with them won't be disciplinary. It'd be, you know, we have a problem to solve. How can we do it together? Um, I'm not going to uh, give them detentions. I'm not going to have a necessarily a punitive. We're going to have a constructive, student-centered solution that we will search for. So we're trying to build on their strength by having them be more comfortable to be problem solvers, because that's a lifelong skill. And so a situation where, where a student might be called up to the board and asked to read something in real time uh, that, they're, that they're not necessarily familiar with, um, that, that kind of a, a, a situation would be handled uh, a lot differently at, at a Westmark. Absolutely. Um, one of the first things we would do is ask for volunteers. And we often have students who like doing that, and they might be the ones who would get recognition for doing that type of activity. But we want to make sure that a student who's not comfortable uh, reading out loud in that fashion. Uh, the teacher may work with them to um, know that in advance, here's the passage we'll read. Why don't you spend some time overnight looking at it, understanding the words? Right. And then you can come into class the next day and perform as other students are performing. But we're going to be very sensitive to the fact that students want to succeed in the classroom. They want the classroom, they want to succeed like everyone else in the world is succeeding. They want to know that, you know, they're doing their math like other students are doing their math. They're reading like other students are reading. Um, but we make sure that we are meeting their accommodation and meeting their strength. Many students, um, they look at that text and they can memorize it pretty quickly and they can recite it. For other students, you know, they have a harder time memorizing, but they work through the language. So we want everyone to feel success, but we will manage that a little differently. 
In terms of, of a, a student as they move through the different stages of Westmark, is there a more advantageous time and a less advantageous time for parents to consider uh, a Westmark um, for their student? Let, let me set up the sort of the school experience. Um, for families and students, school is a community mm -hmm. and not just a place to learn. Right. So if you start at a school in kindergarten, you know, you have friends there, um, parents have made friends with others. So, so the first idea is you're, you might, you're losing a community that you may have participated in for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So one is helping families understand that Westmark is also a school community. And okay. they will find other families and your child will have other friends and other communities can function well for your child. So I think families have to get that over that sense of a loss of a particular community. So for those students that grow up at Westmark, that community is formed from a very early age. For those students that enter Westmark, one of the first things that, that needs to be addressed is that community formation, that engendering a sense of belonging. Yeah, helping them feel comfortable here, helping to have this experience feel normal to them, and helping them to, and often school's a difficult place, so that transition, they, we wanna make sure that they know this is a place where they can feel successful, and they can open up and take risks as learners. So that takes time for them to, to look around and say, oh, I can be a different type of student here. I can reach out to my teachers in a very positive way to get help. Um, so, that, so that's the first piece. The other piece is the, what the school communicates is possible. Mm -hmm. Often it'll be difficult, but the school might say, you know what, but let's give it more time. It's early yet. We can still work with your child. Mm -hmm. And then the parents will say, okay, you're the experts. We'll do it. Um, but then there's a point at which it's very clear that it's not working. We would hope that somewhere in the middle between acknowledging that there's a particular learning deficit that a child has and before the school says, you know what, you know, this is the end of the line at our school, that families would explore a Westmark option and understand that what we can provide their students. So if their student wants a football team, we have a football team. Um, if they want to learn a world language, we have a world language. That, that Westmark is a school that can meet their needs both as just as students, community members, but also can meet their needs intellectually and help them because part of our mission is helping students find success in, the, in college. And that's really important for many families. So um, families often wait until the school makes the decision saying this right. is not going to work for us and you. Um, but, but, you know, getting our message out, giving families an opportunity to say, is my child thriving in this process? You know, we're sending them to school every day, their friends are there, but it's hard. You know, they're, they're crying, they're, you know, we've got to pull them off the knee. So maybe there's an alternative that can meet their needs and they don't have to get to that point. So that's our hope and that's why we want to, you know, part of this interview process is getting the message out that Westmark is an alternative and you don't have to wait for that experience. So let's say a parent has some questions, has some, some doubts about the current situation and the trajectory of the current situation. What's the best way for them to learn about Westmark? Um, I would start by uh, typing www.westmarkschool.org <laughs> and just get an overview of our program. So we provide information, everything from um, our graduation requirements, uh, student-teacher ratios, the type of support services, the teaching methodologies. Uh, they'll see uh, parts, parts of our calendar to see the types of activities that we just had a fall play. We'll have a fall musical. This is how our, our girls' volleyball team has just fared. This is how the middle school flag football team fared, and they'll get a sense of us as a community um, and hopefully find the interests of their child here that they're finding in the current school, but the added benefit of a school where their child's um, academic needs would be met. So we'd start there, and then they can contact our director of admissions um, and perhaps have a conversation with her and set up a tour and come visit the school with their child. Um, and then start the process from there with interviews and day visits and, you know, making sure that this is the right fit for them. And can they learn about the different approaches that might be taken um, compared to um, the approaches that perhaps haven't worked um, in, in, in their own child's education? Absolutely. Um, our director of admissions is uh, an expert in this area, so she can help uh, a family understand how our services and our approach will support different types of students. So it's less about uh, you know the classroom tour, which is standard across schools, mm -hmm. and and perhaps even sitting in a class. It's 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 less about looking at the library and the facilities and the and the technology, 
In addition to that, there are some real significant issues that parents um, are facing, and those specific issues are generally th those that have created the, the discussion. And so your admissions uh, person um, is really going to also focus on those particular uh, learning issues. Absolutely. As you've said, every school will have a classroom. Every school will have a football field, you know, or some type of athletic field. So what's the diff What's the Westmark difference? Um, generally, within a month of a child being here, I'll get an email or a call from a parent saying, my child loves going to school now. Thank you very much. Right. And making sure that we replicate that experience for any potential family and student is important to us. That school is a place of success for their child and not just another school environment. So mm -hmm. all those things are important. We want that special quality of ensuring that we can help their child meet with success. That's critically important to us. Do you require a, a specific set of qualifications of your admissions professionals? Our director of admissions, Polly Brophy, is an educational therapist and her training is in supporting students with language-based learning differences and other learning differences. And so she is a very much a part of the process. So when families are applying to the school, they actually work with someone who can be very helpful in helping them understand if Westmark and its mission is an appropriate fit for their child. In terms of uh, shaping the curriculum, how does this school uh, develop a curricula that, uh, that recognizes the need to prepare children for college um, while simultaneously um, also teaching that curricula through a methodology that um, deals with language-based learning issues. And this is sort of, I think, the very special thing about Westmark and why we uh, focus on language-based learning differences. Um, many very successful uh, entrepreneurs especially and creative types have language-based learning differences. It's not as though they cannot find success in the academic environment, it's how the academic environment is set up for them to learn and to express their expertise and their knowledge. So our curriculum is uh, fairly traditional in the content, but what we do is we enable students to bring many more gifts and strengths to learning and being assessed within that curriculum. And your students are headed toward college. Yes. We have a full-time college counselor, um, and that person meets with families, uh, generally 10th, 11th, 12th grade, that one, help them understand the, how the college process can work for their child. So many families, obviously, when they come to Westmark, they're not sure if their child will be able to go to college. And so one of the things we do is we help families to ensure that they're preparing for that. Mm -hmm. As their student grows in, in academic strength, and they start to understand how their child can find success at school, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that is matched with preparing to go to college. And so it comes together in a nice way where families are like, my child is so successful in school, I'm glad that we're, we're, the college door is open to them. So she's a part of that process. We have academic counselors who work with families, students, and teachers in each grade. And the 11th and 12th grade academic counselors are very much a part of the college planning process, providing information to the college counselor, working with families, working with students. Uh, we actually uh, make sure that students are prepared for their standardized tests. Uh, we make sure that students get their accommodations for testing for college. Uh, we have close relationships with colleges and support offices within colleges to make sure that our students are matched well and that they are prepared for both how to use the support that is available in colleges. You know, it's a, it's a special time for students with learning differences because higher education is very open to supporting them. And so we want to make sure students understand those services and can use them effectively. And we actually have, um, we take time in the senior year to make sure students understand those services and so that they can meet with success in college. Clarence Perkins, thank you so much for your work with children and families and thank you so much for your insights. My pleasure. Thank you.